Welcome everyone, you're watching Kings of Cricket right here on CNN News 18. I'm Shivani Gupta. It's 273 that New Zealand has managed in their 50 overs versus India in Dharamsala. At one stage, they did look set for 300. But the Indian bowlers pecked them back, especially in the last power play. In fact, New Zealand reached 236 overs and then took a good 10 overs for their next 50. And in the last few overs also, they couldn't quite accelerate. Of course, it's Daryl Mitchell, the star of the day for them with 130. Uh, but not much else apart from uh, Rachin Ravindra with him that set a partnership, a record partnership for the third wicket for the New Zealanders versus India. I'm joined in the studio by none other than former India cricketer Murli Karthik. And uh, Mohinder Ramanath, the 1983 World Cup winner, is also with us. Uh, Karthik, let me start with you. Is this a good enough total or would New is New Zealand a few runs short? Um, the way they were, as you rightly said, maybe they feel 20 odd runs short. Yeah, against the batting lineup like Against this a well. good batting lineup. But the only thing which needs to be kept in mind is that in the middle overs, once that partnership was broken, run scoring wasn't easy. Yes, you have yes. to give credit to the way the Indians bowled, but there were the odd few balls which stuck in the surface. It wasn't coming on to mm. it. So, stroke making wasn't easy. Even the set batsmen were finding it a little bit hard. Exactly. And you can understand because when wickets fall at the other end, even if you're on a hundred, mm. sometimes you lose that uh, rhythm and momentum because you know that wickets are falling at the other end. And also, it'll be interesting to see, uh, just at the fag end, we saw a little bit of dew. Mm. Um, the key is the first five or six overs, mm. how the Indians negotiate, Trent Bolt, Matt Henry. Um, and then, I think things should get easier, is what I feel. If there is dew, mm. then batting will be a lot easier. All right, uh, Venkatesh Prasad, Graham Swan, Ayaz Memin, our full panel joining us. Uh, Jimmy, finally, uh, of course, uh, Mohamed Shabi was played and what a star he's been in this match. Now you've got another problem for the Indian uh, dressing room. How do they make Shami sit out anymore? <laughs> no, I don't think they should worry about the next game. I think this game is more important than anything <laughs> else. <laughs> I think they'll just uh, uh, finally concentrate on this. Yeah, he's been a fantastic bowler, I mm. think. The way he bowls, he attacks, he bowls stump to stump and his seam position is unbelievable, you know, really because the way he carries on bowling till the last over and he has a lot of variation. So, he can bowl at different pace and different length also and with a lot of control. So, coming back to the score, I think it's a good score according to me and mm. if uh, the bowlers keep bowling uh, in the stumps and it's not easy to really play too many strokes easily. So, let's see how the Indian starts and how the New Zealander bowls because I think the first 5 to 10 overs are very crucial from both uh, sides. And if India doesn't lose wicket, then probably I think the target won't be that difficult because later on we didn't see much of a swing or seam mm. uh, uh, happening in this particular game. Mm. And spinners are not really very effective because there's no turn available, which we have noticed from both uh, Ravindra Ch Jadeja and uh, Yadav over here. So, I think that way the one has to carry on till the end, you know, if India has to win, that means Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli are the key. Absolutely. Uh, the start that Gil and Rohit Sharma give us is going to be extremely important and of course Virat Kohli after that. Uh, Graham, uh, what do you think really went wrong for the New Zealanders there? A partnership at run a ball, 150 partnership at run a ball and then almost nothing after that. Uh, once that partnership was broken, as Karthik and I were discussing, it seemed like run scoring became harder. Maybe something the Indian batsman would uh, keep an eye on. Uh, but, you know, the despite the fact that we were missing that sixth bowling option, uh, some of the wicket takers came into the action and, you know, con controlled the innings quite well towards the end, the in Indian bowlers. Karthik summed it up. If you're already t always taking wickets, sorry, it's very hard for incoming batsmen to just carry on at the same pace mm. that a set partnership has scored at. Um, you have to take your hat off to India. At one stage, it was looking like India, um, New Zealand would be in the platform to push for well over 300, for 330, mm. 340. Mm. And I think that would be too many to chase. As it is, and I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'm a spin bowler and I know I'll always back up the spin bowlers, but no one is going to mention how well Kuldeep came back yes. after his first four overs. Four overs, nearly 40 runs conceded. And the pressure that New Zealand were obviously putting him under, they, they de definitely targeted him, saying, no, we're getting after him. We're going to make sure that they are weak and they have to rely on a, a part-time bowler. 
for him to come back in his last six overs and, and only go for 40 more runs and get those couple of wickets, brilliant. I thought that was exceptional from Cordy. And that, because he took those wickets, that opened the door for Shami to get his five. And Jasprit Bumrah, who, by the way, is the best Yorker bowler I think has ever been in the game of cricket. Hmm. That was ridiculous at the end. A guy who's already on 100, who just can't get on strike because the tail ender cannot get off strike because of Yorker after Yorker after Yorker. Jasprit Bumrah is the bowler of this tournament, seam-wise, but for the spinners, Kuldeep Yadav today was exceptional, the way he bounced back. Yes.